Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Galileo Galilei. And folks, let me tell you right now, there is a new designer in town. Uh, Thomas Hollick, the designer of Galileo Galilei here, uh, has got three big box games coming out for Eschen Spiel this year, 2024. And I'm going to try my best to make sure I get all three of them covered on the channel in time for Eschen Spiel, because so far I've played two of them and they're phenomenal. Uh, this guy is total zero to hero. Came out of nowhere and um, between this and Tea Gardens and um, the upcoming SETI, which I have not played yet, but I'm looking forward to this is someone to watch. Kind of reminds me of a few years ago, Johnny Pack came out of nowhere in one year. I uh, had three big games come out and they were all fantastic and so far two of Thomas's three games have proven to be amazing and uh, folks, it's really saying something. Uh, the strength of this this design too because um, I was a little worried that my wife wouldn't dig it going in because this is uh, what she often refers to as a baby step game. A game where you usually take several turns in a row just doing simple little small incremental uh, things. Building and building and building and building until you can eventually do a big turn with nice combos between stuff and conversions and all of that. And that is often something uh, that turns my wife off because she wants all of her turns to be big and meaningful and meaty and satisfying. Um, and somehow, in spite of her, uh, you know, dislike for games with lots of small turns, she loved this one as much as me. Now, I will admit, it is no doubt in part because at its heart, this is a Rondell game, but it doesn't look like it and it doesn't feel like it because of the fun toy factor of our telescope that we are pointing to the different locations in the nighttime sky. But this is a very cool and unique take on Rondells because of the way uh, each spot on the Rondell, or in this case, the quarter Rondell, really, uh, is... Uh, one, you know, one has a fixed action. You know, there's always these four actions you get to choose from depending on where you land. Or I'm sorry, I guess there's five spaces. But then the other spaces are constantly in motion, like the nighttime sky itself. And that is a fun little thematic nod that oh, the the uh, the you know the position of the uh, um ah a series of stars. Not observations, not conservations, constellations. Well, the constellations are constantly in motion, and that's represented by all our little action bonuses we're getting. And the fact that you can upgrade these bonuses and then use them to really good effect, but then, oh no, they go down to the bottom, and it's going to take a while before they slide their way back up again. So you're building up for a big turn later on. Um... This is just a lot of fun to play with. It's nicely put together. Also, each of the four playable characters, also I should say there is a fifth character that's available as a promo at Essence Peel. Not sure how folks can get their hands on it, but it is out there. Uh, but it's very, very cool that you can just play them uh, standard so that everybody has, you know, it's a very straightforward game, or I should say everybody has the, the same uh, actions available to them. But of course, it's much more fun to play with the cool, unique bonuses that each character Character gets. Um, you know, they're very, very different, very unique. And depending on which, you know, whether it's uh, Bruno or Kepler or Galileo or uh, Copernicus, uh, you're going to get a very, very different, fun little almost mini game unique to you that you're trying to manipulate while, um, you know, spotting all these big, beautiful cards, which again are stunning looking. You know, spotting that supernova or the Scorpius in the nighttime sky to score points and, um, you know, unlock all kinds of bonuses. There's several different subsystems here, uh, you know, turning your comet spottings into wilds that, if after you use them enough, can be big bonuses. The um, spotting the Constellations doesn't get you many points, but it can get you very quick one, two, double uh, bonuses. You know, the bonus for what you remove from the board and wherever you place it. And then the biggest thing of all that you always have to bear in mind is the Spanish Inquisition, because... In this game, you have to expect the Spanish Inquisition is going to be banging on your door and causing you trouble. And it can be a huge loss of points if you uh, get them and then don't persuade them that you're um, you know, not going to you know, corrupt the minds of the people. But in fact, no, you're just doing good science. And science itself is a good thing. But uh, it's just another thing you... And it's, it's a really strong pressure because if you get a bunch of these Inquisitors and you do not 
not work over the course of the game and persuade them over to your side, um, they will cost you hugely by the end of the game. Um, so you've got, you've got this threat, uh, which is not something you often feel in a lot of euros. You know that that you know there is. You know, there's pressure in that the fact, oh, well, I'm racing to score more points than my opponents or draft cards before they do. But here you've got this external, very thematic issue to deal with um, because, you know, this was a huge problem, uh, you know, the uh, clash between science and religion in the day. And it is brought into this game really, really smartly. And also, I should say, uh, I really appreciate the uh, that Thomas went the extra mile to ensure that um, you know, like I said, each of the different astronomers has their own unique little kind of mini game subsystem, and uh, the rule book has a whole section devoted to the thematic uh, verisimilitude of that. You know, the history of these uh, different astronomers and how their special abilities are thematically tied in to what they were known for, what kind of breakthroughs they themselves made, and so that's really nice as well. Oh, and then if all that weren't enough, every time you set up and play. You are going to get two different global objectives everybody's chasing after to be the first to complete, and four different progress tracks. Each one gets a random um, you know, a thing that you can score points on, depending on how far you climb your way up. But every time you play, um, the bonuses you get for climbing up those uh, progress tracks could be randomly assigned as well. So this game just has a ton of setup variability in it that really helps ensure that you are going to want to keep coming back because every time you are going to get a, uh, a very fun and satisfying uh, experience. Really impressed. I'm, I'm again. I'm calling it right now, folks. This guy, Thomas Hollick, because I already played the second one of his, and I'll be doing a video for that soon, and hopefully I can get a copy of SETI. So that's actually really cool too. Of these three games he's putting out this year, his first one out is Galileo Galilei. You know, the early days of astronomy. Um, another one is SETI, a modern. Uh, astronomy going on today. And then his third one, oh, which is right here. I'm going to be filming it later today. Tea Garden is going way back to uh, the Yunnan province in um, ancient China to uh, develop tea as an industry. But uh, so Thomas, with his three games, is showing off uh, a very wide range of uh, gameplay. And I'm really impressed. I mean, I kind of feel like, folks, I, I, I haven't really thought about this very much, but it's almost like we're kind of at the birth of the third big generation, maybe the fourth generation of designers. I mean, because you can go way back, you know, uh, to Sid Saxon, you know, like the prehistory times. But then, you know, back in the in the aughts, you've got Uwe Rosenberg, you've got you know Reiner Knizia, uh, you got Stefan Feld, you know, you know the the first real wave of modern designers, and then um, you know after them, oh, there's. Bill Walker Harding and um, you know and, and and so many other greats that have come on since then and and then more recently like I mean I've been so blown away by the designs of uh oh um I love talking about him all the time and all of a sudden I can't think of his name oh that is embarrassing um oh. Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia, uh, you know, and so Danny, uh, I, I've, I've sung his praises so many times, and he's probably embarrassed I'm doing it again, but he has so blown me away. Over two years, he's had three big, four big games now, and then here comes Thomas, and I, I, I just, I just want to say how amazing it is to be a Euro game lover right now because you've got designers coming along, standing on the shoulder of giants, a third or maybe depending on how you want to look at it, fourth generation of designers making some of the coolest, cool combinations of existing mechanisms. Like I said, it's hard. This is a Rondell game and a set collection game and a progress track game and um, you know, and, and you know, a, a peekaboo game, because when you pull these off the board, you get bonuses and then you put them out to get other bonuses. We've seen all these things in lots of different games, but the way they all come together here, and then the way he makes a rondel new and fresh and interesting, because one of the steps on the rondel is upgrade these spaces, and then you want to make sure you're jumping to them quick, but then once you use them, they're gone, because this rondel is constantly in motion based on the choices you make.
that makes it a really cool, fun take on, you know, again, you know, going back to the OG first gen, Mac Gertz and the like, if we, before we get into the prehistory, um, you know, I mean, you've got all these amazing designers coming along now and doing such wonderful, new, exciting things, finding new ways to combine stuff. And then, hey, not for nothing, uh, this is a really exciting time um, because we have more board game publishers coming along. Uh, this is, I believe, the first published game from new publisher, Pink Troubadour. Uh, they're uh, some folks who have been in the industry for years working with other um, you know, development houses and now they've said, you know what, we're going to make our dreams come true and this is our first big baby coming out at SN24 and I am so excited for them because this is a great debut for them. It's a great debut for Thomas. Going into it, I was a little nervous because reading the rules, I could see, wow, this is going to be one of those games where you take lots of little steps and then do the occasional big step. My wife, uh, there have been several games this year uh, that we've played that did not work out, but she really enjoyed this. It's so satisfying. There's so many different things to keep track of. You know, as much as I'm raving about this, it did occur to me, I should mention one thing uh, that my wife pointed out. It was a bit of an oversight and a little bit disappointing, and that is that it's a boys' club here. And now, on some level, it's understandable. You know, certainly the astronomers they chose are, you know, practically household names. But it's not like it was only men working in the field back in this time. There were women who were making huge breakthroughs as well. The mother of moon charts, um, Tycho Bray's sister was really heavily involved. Even uh, Galileo's daughter um, basically worked with her father. I mean, there were lots of uh, lesser known names, and it's kind of a shame. I, I, I can't blame them for picking the, the big four. That's fine. But you know what? Those are two-sided boards. It would have been easy to say, on the other side, how about putting uh, a female astronomer? Her, you know, there were quite a few to choose from, and then just include some elements in the rule books for them as well. Um, you know, and they could use the same uh, basic, uh, you know, a special mini game that uh, is available on the other side. Just to have a little bit more variety and to sing the praises of those who have traditionally gone unsung. Because real history, there were women uh, involved in this too. And they were right there making significant breakthroughs and um, being respected at the time. And it's just that time tends to forget. And so that's why it's a missed opportunity that the game didn't step up to right that wrong. Now, fingers crossed, the game is so good. Maybe it will get an expansion somewhere down the road, and this is a um, something that can be revisited because I do think the game is great, and I look forward to seeing more. But I do think that's probably worth pointing out. Any opportunity somebody has, why not open our eyes to more real history? And the history that is been unfortunately and unfairly forgotten. So, just throwing that out there. Okay, uh, I think I was just about to wrap up. On the whole, I am really, really impressed. Uh, a great game from a great new designer and a great new publisher that I think when people get their hands on it, they are going to be um, having just as much fun as me and Jen. And that was the run-through for Galileo Galilei. Uh, thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh, bye bye